was stolen. My uniform. Oh, when all the was when did this happen? And everything. When did that happen? Uh, that was after the war, many years afterwards. Oh. That's actually, when I came to Chicago. Oh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And that was in '54. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, the only thing I had somehow was this, and a few little medals that I think lost somewhere between all the kids and everything. Who knows? Well, I've always wanted to write a story about my life, as I was saying, because... Yeah, you've got such an interesting one. Well, way before... All right, maybe I'm going to read this to you. Gold stars, I told you about that. Uh, total patriotism was everywhere. Navy Yard, Fort Dix, close to Philadelphia, and swamp the servicemen who got free bus, uh, movies, entertainment, uh, Army, etc., came first. Uh, sacrifice for many restaurants that sometimes would have egg products or a, a sign on the front door no food today, mm -hmm. food shortage. Coffee, sugar, meat had to be doled out by red and blue discs. Bonds were a must. Everywhere you went, they said, uh, Uncle Sam needs you. Big signs everywhere. Yeah. Uh, if someone wasn't in the service, they were immediately tagged as 4F, oh. which was kind of a big disgrace. If you saw a young man on the street and he wasn't in the army, you know, what's your problem? Really? You must be mentally something wrong with you. Wow. Or you got a record. Uh, so they couldn't take it. Yeah. I see oh, somebody else. Oh. I see somebody is going to meet your baby. It's a crazy house. I mean, who in the heck would this be? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to come. Yeah. Or maybe it's my yes. mommy's brother. Who it is? I'm going to. Oh, my life before. Oh my God, couldn't believe that. If you ever wanted to write an story, an exciting story. Uh, I was born in Detroit, Michigan. Oh wow. My father was a professional fighter. Oh my gosh. The depression, severe, severe, severe depression, like you would never even think of. Oh yeah. Where people were giving their children away because they couldn't feed them. Oh my gosh. My father was shot. Oh my. Mm -hmm. And I was put on a Greyhound bus with my brother when I was seven years old, sent to live. I went to 13 schools in three years in three different states. Wow. So I had a lot of experience till I got to to Pennsylvania. And that, that's just what, like the first seven, eight years of your life? That I was from seven to 13. Oh, seven to 13, okay, wow. 13, I ended up in Altoona, Pennsylvania. Okay. With an aunt who got my mother out of a hospital. She'd been in the hospital for several years. Oh my gosh. So, um, but what was that like during those those years of moving around and no oh, horrible. money? Horrible, horrible because nobody wanted you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my brother and I were separated, and he was three years younger than me. It was harder on him. Oh wow! He became an alcoholic as he got older. Yeah, yeah. and then from those experiences, hard on him. But somehow I must have had a stronger. Because I had to take care of him completely when I was young. I, it seems like my whole life is taking care of somebody. Yeah. Yeah. It's a common theme. Yeah. My mother. My mother lived till she was ninety-four. Wow. Took care of her, and before that, my husband, who I remarried in Chicago, mm -hmm. he had lymphoma. I took care of him for several years. Oh. My mother lived five years longer than him. He's been dead twenty-seven years. Wow. She. She has long She had longevity. Yeah. But where was your mother during those years when you were she moving? She was in Ann Arbor, Michigan. She had very bad despondency, depression. Very, very hard, hard, hard life. Oh. Mental, physical abuse. Yeah. Through the years, because from her from her childhood days. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, her nervous breakdowns were horrible. In fact, it's when I was, what, eight years old, I had to pull her head out of the oven. Oh my God. She was trying to kill herself and my brother and I. Mm. So like I said, there's some, some horrible stories.
yeah. you know, almost hate to reveal. Bonds were very necessary. Oh. So they push bonds constantly. And that was one of the things I was given to because I'm alone, I have no family, so anything they had extra to do, they pushed on me. They pushed on you. were volunteers for UFO. Volunteers were needed everywhere, no wow. matter what your age was. They were. If you were old and had nothing to do, they would have you wrap bandages. Make really? packages, write letters to the boys. Wow. To help with the UFOs, plan dance. Yes, all these free things. Free food, packages, whatever they could do. Now, Bloods. who would, um, like, who would organize that letter writing like that? Was it through, like, the Army or was it through another organization? Which is that? Tell me that. Um, like you said, writing letters to the boys. Who would organize that? Actually, you would wait for the troop trains to come oh. in or anybody. You would go to the UFO and say, do you have a brother in the service? Does he need mail? Write to. They'd give him the name. And many, many romances were started like that. Yeah. Yeah, writing to strangers. Oh. You send your picture. Yeah. Then send you the picture just to cheer them up. Just to cheer them up. Because you're taking young boys, suddenly send them to a battlefield that oh, they had yeah. no idea what they were in for. Right. Iwo Jima and Guam and places that Aleutian Island were they were actually committing suicide oh. being stranded in these horrible horrible places where there was nothing nobody yeah. and the freezing freezing temperatures yeah. they were so bad that they had to go hang on to ropes from building to building oh my god and uh, it was a uh, very very bad conditions for young boys who were right out of school yeah they weren't used to anything like that oh i'm very sure. hard for them mm -hmm. i'm sure and let me say, usually if you had uh, two children, you didn't have to go to the service. Really? You yeah, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. Unless things got bad, and there were times when they were. They, one man who came home, he actually got discharged. He had been uh, sick, so he got a discharge. He couldn't find a suit, so the only place he could go was somewhere on Maxwell Street in Chicago, uh -huh. and a yellow suit. He looked oh, so my. ridiculous, but he was a big man, <laughs> yeah. and he could not he find a suit. couldn't find a suit. Oh, yeah. my God. Uh, sailors were avoided. Sailors had a bad reputation. <laughs> Usually you would pass the bar, say, I'm coming home at midnight after my shift, wearing the steel shoes and the steel hat and everything else. Yeah. You certainly weren't attractive, yeah. but you avoided... Automatic the sailors. They had kind of a bad reputation. They used to get drunk and everything. Yeah. Or more or less the soldiers were a lot more because they were ready yeah. to be shipped out to Fort Dix. Oh. They knew their next move was going to be overseas and I they didn't see. know where they were going. I see. Yeah. So yeah. these soldiers and sailors that you would meet um, or that, you know, were just around, was it they were still doing their training in America? Or oh, yeah. Was, okay, and yeah. then they were going to all be shipped Yeah, they off. would give like 48 hours off, 24 hours oh, off, yeah. something like that. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. But there were many bases near there. Fort Monmouth was another one. But everybody, you didn't pass anybody on the street that wasn't in some kind of a uniform. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So as far as life then, like, just life in America, who was then doing just the regular restaurants and stores and or teaching, things like that? Was it just older people who were who were too old that couldn't older be? Older people are the ones that were considered 4F. Okay. Yes. Like you were saying. They were 4F. It was like a symbol. Yeah. That is, you looked at somebody, what are, why aren't you in the service? You yeah. Know, very strange. Well, I either have four children and I'm married or... Uh, I have a disability of yeah, some kind. Some My that. hearing, I have a drum, eardrum that okay. won't accept me in the army, yeah. something, but they weren't perfect because they, they did have to be perfect specimens. They had to be really geared to suddenly leave here with no yeah. experience and go to right. stark war. Right. Oh, I'm sure. And then um, it's, my next question I was gonna say um so the do you remember like the World War Two era very distinctly compared to say you know other all the decades you've lived through for example the you know Korean War or Vietnam or the 90s or 80s do you remember those World War Two years as just very distinct oh yes because I was that age that I was right in it yes. yeah uh -huh. yeah and the other ones, even today, 
uh, and they're far distance, even Vietnam. I don't know much about other than the movies, but at that time we had no television. All we had was a radio, and you hardly had any time to listen to it. So you really didn't know what was going on. All you did is you followed orders, yeah. and uh, it was uh, just uh, work, work, work. Right. Yeah, uh-huh. Exist. Exist, yeah. yeah. Cigarettes, I think they cost about 14 cents a pack. Oh, wow. But they were for the soldiers. If you knew a soldier, he could get yeah, them for you. I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I never smoked in all my life, so I never... Yeah. was one for the cigarettes, cigarettes. Uh, right back again because uh -huh. suddenly vj day the job ended just like that we had no warning nothing okay you're done well here i'm done and here i am what do i do now yeah. now i have no paycheck coming and oh. nothing the war is over now what yeah after the war my mother was alone my brother was in the service so i had no opportunity to go back home oh. So I did. I went back home and I got a job for Sears. I worked at Sears for seven years. Okay. Got married, had a son, sit down, who was the most wonderful person in the world. Aww. Yeah, he's uh, the greatest son anyone could ever have. Aww. But it was like uh, you with the, the baby here. Yeah. I was, uh, I was married five years. Till I had a baby, my my husband was a very very strict Italian guy, who believed in women stay home. You don't mingle with anybody. You're really strict old time. Yeah. So finally convinced him to come to Chicago for a job. Uh huh. And uh, he hated it here, and I liked it. Uh -huh. So he went back, and I stayed. And I bought a house, and uh, what I did, I rented out rooms. Oh wow! And I still do. Do you really? Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. I just uh, I just had uh, students from China, exchange students, okay. which I've had every year for about five years. That's great. For the month of July. And I just had two kids from uh, uh, North Park College. They lived here for two years. Oh, wow. So they're gone now, and now I have just a single man up there. It's they easier. live in this house yeah. right here? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is mine. This is five rooms mine. Yes. My granddaughter, the baby, and her husband live downstairs. I have an apartment down there, and I rent the upstairs. Oh, nice. Yeah, so right now, but I, I have run into students many times. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's great. And that's... the ones from China, very exciting. I have a good time with them. I bet. Uh, yeah. I bet. Oh. In there, yeah. Chicago is tough, but you can make yeah. it. Yeah. If, you, if there's a way of doing it, you'll do it. Right. What do you think you're doing? I don't know. <laughs> And so now this is what I do. I babysit. Aww. It's a killer. <laughs> it is. It's a hard one. Four years old. Four years old. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh. She's not the easiest to take care of, to tell you. The truth. Yeah. <laughs> and this is your uh, great your son's daughter. daughter's child. Mm -hmm. Aww. Mm -hmm. That's special. Yeah, yeah. She's, a, she's a caregiver. Yeah. She's not feeling well today, but she has a. Uh, patient who's in a nursing home nearby, so uh -huh. she goes to check on him, make sure he's okay and everything. Oh, okay. But, yeah, she'll be back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did she get paid for that, or does she just do oh, that? She, no, she gets paid oh, for it. Oh, she's a, mm -hmm. that's her job, yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Aww. And her husband has a job in a warehouse. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and they're, together they're trying to save money to buy a house. Yeah. I don't know when that's ever going to be yeah. because it's not easy. No. As you know. Yeah. Yeah. As you know. But they're lucky that they have to live yes, here with you. Yes, they are. That I'm able to manage to take care of this. Yeah. That's amazing. Sweet little girl. Yeah, she is. And she is sweet. She's very smart. Yes, I can. I'm not smart. Yes, you are. You are very smart, Angela. I don't know how to take care of babies. Oh, you're still young and you're already doing a good job. I was called one time to the Ritz Carlton Hotel to also do the same thing that you're doing. Yeah. They wanted to know anybody from the World War II who has memories of it. So I went down and did an interview. Good. So I had a chance to go to Normandy Beachhead to see the grave of this soldier I was engaged to. Yeah. But I couldn't go because I couldn't get off of work. Oh. But they sent me a recording back of his grave site yeah. and everything, and I sent it to his sister. I thought the family should have it instead of me. Oh, yeah. wow. Would you say that that um, your fiance sadly that passed was that 
um, very hard for you, or was it, was it kind of like life goes on and then you met your husband? Never, never forgot him. It seemed like the only man in my life. His number was 2080-5684, Company A, 175th Regiment, APO, NYCNY. <laughs> Never a night has gone by that I haven't said a prayer for him. Never forget him. Different from anyone I ever met. Maybe that's why I never really had a successful marriage. Or else I became so independent being on my own that yeah. I have to be the boss. Right. Because I feel, no matter who it is, uh, They're not I can handle it better than them. What was his name, your fiance? Robert B. Etheridge. Oh. And you met him, how did In you Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. In a blackout. In a blackout, that's right. Is that yeah. romantic? Yeah. Yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah. That is. Only saw him a few times. Most of it was letters. Aww. And there were no... How it was. Intimate settings like there are today. Like, you know, you meet somebody... Things were different then. There was no such things as running to a motel or a hotel or things like right. that. Nothing like that. It was more or less meeting in a public place, have dinner and everything, because you never knew when they were going to be shipped out. Yeah. At a, at a, min, a minute's notice. Right. So I, I didn't know him very long, and uh, never forgot him. No. Never will. <laughs> I had a beautiful ring that was also stolen. I had a big robbery here. It was uh, in the house. Yeah, so almost everything I had that was valuable has been stolen one way or another from me. Mm. All the letters that I had written to me, I had in the box with my uniform and everything in a storage apartment where I lived in Chicago. Yeah, and that's... Someone broke in the locker, stole things that they couldn't possibly use. Yeah, no, they no probably problem. just grabbed everything without looking. Yeah, uh-huh. And yeah. then... Those letters are such treasures to you, but to somebody else, they probably even, just I don't even them. have one. I didn't even put one aside. I mean, I kept them all together. Yeah, that's yeah. what you would do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. All gone, except the the memories, which I have very, very vivid reflection. Right. Of. Like, yeah, I got a good memory. Thank you God. Have I that. Think, yeah, yeah. So the le these were letters from your fiance and oh, just uh, other people. My fiance from overseas. Uh huh. Yeah, mm. they're all from overseas. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's how you would correspond. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And like I said, many of them were emails, v mails, they call them, v mails, yeah, v -mails. little tiny cards. Mm -hmm. But most of them were letters, long letters, long written letters. letters uh -huh. But they were still censored? No, no, those weren't, no. Only the Not v until were certain censored. areas where they were. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They were not censored. Most of them were not. I see. Okay. And then you just ended up meeting your husband after the war years? Yeah, uh, after I went back home. Uh, I think I had it in my mind, I'm going to have to get married somewhere along the line. And uh, I thought, 23 is a good age. Yeah. He was also a soldier. He just, just came home. Okay. And he had lived down the street from me for many years, but I never really knew him. Yeah. Men at a dance. He was a good dancer. I was a good dancer. There you go. And after the dance is over, you face reality, which isn't too hard to, to take. Yeah, yeah. God bless you. Hold your mouth. God bless you. Hold your mouth. Hold your mouth. Excuse me, yourself. So what are some of the like greatest times and best memories through the years? You're raising your son or working? Uh, the war years were very memorable. I mean, I, and nothing like that will ever happen yeah. again to me. I mean, for oh, I know a few hectic years, I mean, things experience. that I can't forget. But yeah. guess what? I think my best years are Chicago, living in Chicago. Yeah. Okay. Oh, where I, I became independent again. Again, yes. Yes. Like After not years. having the independence for a few years. Yeah, well, first of all, I got hired at uh, Western Electric. Okay. Yeah, and at 22nd Street. And all I knew was how to get to the work and back. I didn't know <laughs> Plus, I have my son, 16 months old. Oh, my God. I was left here alone with him. Wow. Hard time? Oh, my God. I have to get up at 6 a.m., take him to a nursery school. And then I worked 7 to 3. I was able to pick him up and really <laughs> live on next to nothing for a long time. Oh, that's hard. Then my mother joined me here. Then I had my mother to help me. Oh, nice. And then uh, by a lucky break, I saw an ad in the paper where this very, very old couple wanted to sell their house under contract. Okay. 
in, in Rogers Park. So I went there and met them, and they liked me, and I liked them, and I was able to buy the house with very little money down. Nice, nice.